Okay, so what I'm going to construct now is kind of different. It's, it's essentially looking at our previous shape. This is an exploded tetrahedron, but to be sure, this pattern can keep going onward. We just keep connecting everything in a spiral mode, and it can build a larger structure that goes on indefinitely in all directions. And um, So we're going to do that in a way where we can see how it's actually made up of a bunch of stacked these shapes. These are the triangular antiprism, okay? And I showed how to make just one of those in a previous video. Um, in fact, this was it. The rain, it gave me a kind of a Roy G. Biv rainbow, and that was then the base for building this. That's the exploded tetrahedron video. But here we're going to have each of the um, triangular antiprisms be one color. And just to review how to make those, easiest to take three of the tiles and arrange them like that uh, with vertices pointing outward to make a nice equilateral triangle. And we can actually put all these connectors here in place then, get it ready to receive the other three. And if you're going to try building eight of these or more, you'll get pretty fast at it. Okay? So, we'll add those. Okay? And a reminder that these are all being connected in a spiral pattern. See how that spirals? Not a zigzag pattern. Okay? No sharp points, no quick turnarounds. It's all very smooth. Okay? And here, I'm about to put this one in the wrong way, and boy, I know it right away. Wait, that's going the wrong way. That's a zigzag, just to show you. So just turn it 90 degrees, and voila. Okay? There you go. Okay? And I've got eight of these all together. And the nice thing about this shape, and this one's true of the octahedron I made this way, these are the 48 tiles that come in a deluxe set. Some of the structures I show, you have to buy more than one deluxe set because of the colors, or because of the numbers. Here you have enough tiles and enough connectors to build this particular thing. Okay? In the octahedron thing, I started connecting these like this and was showing that. Here, we're going to connect them... Oh, and by the way, if I made that connection, that would be a zigzag connection right there. Okay? Between the two. But here we're not. We're going to continue the spiral connection by taking these and putting them top base connected to bottom base. You have to lift this up. Okay? And you can just let it hinge down like that. You could also prop something like another hyper tile up there just to keep it in position. Maybe we'll do that. Um, so, we'll do that. Whoops, look what I'm doing. Well, that's okay. Ready? I put this on top, but no, I'm going to then flip it over so it's on the bottom. That works too. And again, I could just let the hinge down. I think I'll put them on the red one first this time so I don't make that same mistake. <laughs> Where I'm putting these, I don't really care. What color that is, color-wise, um, lots of possibilities there. Okay. Well, that one stayed up because it was resting on top of that. Um, no matter. We're now going to take. What will we do? How about this black one? And it's going to be connected here, and that'll hold these two in place. Okay. So. we go. By the way, if you're having trouble with these falling apart, you're welcome to use um, double connectors. I don't know that you'd have quite enough then in a deluxe set, but at least you can put some of the joints as double connections and not have to worry about it falling apart on you. Okay, we got that one now. And we're starting to see maybe that kind of shape to it emerging. 
Um, we'll put the green one here. Again, when you make these connections, it's best if you can try to hold the other ones in place so you don't break a connection every time you make a new one. But that happens. Okay, I'm going to bring this up and it's going to hold it up there now in place. Okay, where do you suppose the next one goes? We'll, cut it. we'll make it the orange one. Doesn't really matter. We're going to put all four of these here. Okay, and now we'll carefully try to add this orange one in there. Don't force it. Whoop. This one's kind of tricky. There we go. And the last one will be right here on top. Okay. And I think I'm going to put those six connectors all on the white one first. I don't think it really matters. Okay, so this shape, kind of fun, it gives you an idea of what that matrix would look like if we just kept adding on here. And the other thing you'll notice is this is actually in the shape of a cube. Okay, this corner, this corner, this corner, and what would be another corner right there it would just be the next iteration. Make up this square face. This one, again, only missing this corner. But it certainly is like a cube in terms of every one of these faces being similar. Okay, And it also gives kind of some neat patterns as it rotates around. Okay, So, we're going to call this the hyperbolic matrix cube because it is, after all, a cube with just, I guess, these corners cut off here, okay? Um, but if I imagine those two points, we definitely have something that would be a cube. And built into that is also a bunch of these triangular antiprisms. And also woven in there is this shape, which is based on a tetrahedron. So it's got a lot of geometric solids all present in one structure.